Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect. And with the recent controversy, you know, surrounding the law, you know, and, um, you know, faith in Yahweh Shai, you know, being our way to salvation, you know, I think it's something we could all take from it, you know, outside of the uh, back and forth. You know, um, I was talking to a brother, and uh, I will say, as we have been defending, you know, the, the gospel of late, going into these particular topics, it's forced me to read the laws more. And, um, you know, there's a, a lot of emotions <laughs> that come from reading those laws, you know. On one hand, you know, you figure out how filthy you are and how far off of the mark we are as a nation. I mean, goodness gracious, I mean, reading the laws, you know, this is one aspect of it that I've picked up. I am filthy. I need salvation, you know, and <laughs> ultimately, hopefully, the Lord has mercy, all right? And, you know, because we live under the rulership of the man of sin. So the way that this society is set up, Esau uses the law, okay? Uh, uh, he knows who you are. He knows what's written in the book. He, he uses the law as a weapon against us, as Israelites, We'll get into that in just a minute. So, you know, that's one emotion you get. You know, you're filthy, like, goodness gracious. And then, you know, another thought that comes to mind, you know, reading the laws is how, you know, intricate, how particular the Most High is, how clean he is, how, you know, everything is about being pure. Everything is about being holy, you know cleansing he's a very clean things are supposed to be separate you know with everything that he created on earth you know there is a way to interact with it and there is a way not to interact with it <laughs> there are things that are uh, supposed to you know be kept here there's things that are supposed to be kept there when it all works together you know it produces life it produces a clean environment a good smell all right even in the laws of the bible there's a quarantine Okay, for particular people who are sick and have particular types of diseases until they're healed up, they can't go amongst the rest of the people. Okay, if they have particular diseases, they will be away from everyone. That's that's in our laws, the laws of quarantine. Okay, there's so many laws, you know, and the most highest ways are far out. You know, and here it is, you know, we can't be ashamed of these things. You know, so... You know, sitting here, you know, thinking and reflecting on everything that's been going on. You know, I remember uh, years back, the Apostle Tahar said we needed to read the laws more. All right. So, you know, through this all, it has forced me, you know, I know you brothers as well, to go into the laws. And it's like, whoa. It's like, whoa. You know, the, the Heavenly Father is on a whole nother level. All right. And he... He gave us that law. Um, you know, we received it written on stone. You know, it's supposed to just be a way, but we received it as a nation written on stone in Egypt with Moses. As a matter of fact, you know, and when you read the first five books of the Bible, that is known as the Torah. All right, the law, Tharawah. All right, and in those books, Moses <laughs> gives you every he he gives you the foundation of who you are you know the the legacy starting at the sons of god you know uh, uh in the heavens you know he, he he gives you your earthly in the beginning the alahayim you know he, he gives you a a very abridged you know uh version of you know what the heavenly father you know supped with him on the mount directly <laughs> all right through of course the angel in the heavens okay and moses eventually received the laws to give the children of israel so that he can make a covenant marriage agreement with them all right and we broke that oath 
all right looking at you know those laws now you see i mean according to this bible according to what we believe while we're in this condition you know we broke the agreement <laughs> you see whether you got a problem with it or not now this is a uh, Nehemiah 9 and 13 thou camest down also upon Mount Sinai and spake us with them from heaven and gave us them right judgments and, a, and true laws good statutes and commandments okay and the and the law is holy the law is a beautiful thing all right it's this flesh in this condition we are all right in, in the earth as to where those laws can be used all right to condemn us in in some very bad ways you know the condition of how you know you you constantly all right are working on the sabbath you're constantly doing things that when you read the law you know and putting yourselves in positions i mean every it makes me want to be more clean all right makes me want to take more showers it makes me you know when you read the law now i'm like okay it is switching up my mindset you know as to the uh my, you know the getting inside of the mind of the most high like why would he you know, do particular things. Why is a woman, you know, if she runs up on a dude, that, you know, that's her husband's fighting and hit him in the nuts, why is her hand cut off? And what is the Lord saying with that? <laughs> you know, the law on rape. You know, why would he, you know, allow a, a situation where uh, if she's not betrothed, you know, or married to where the the, the dowry is paid to the father and a, and a marriage is started, a family is started, you know? Because our, our culture and the Heavenly Father, everything is based upon life. Everything is based on family, structure, legacy being forwarded. Okay? And families are the, the, the foundation of the earth. Okay? And at the end of the day, everything has been defiled. And you see that. You, now that you know the law and you see how things are, how the Most High wants things, all right, and you know, comparison to what you see as normal everyday life, it is like whoa. Right? So it says, and made known unto them thy holy Sabbath, and commandest them precepts, statutes, and laws by the hand of Moses thy servant. You see that? And this is just giving you our history when you read this chapter. It's a good chapter to read, you know, but those those laws all right uh are a beautiful thing so you know as i as i've been reading the laws you know learning more about the shoe bread like you'll see show bread and be like okay it was show bread in the temple but there's a whole all right a narrative there's a whole you know uh, uh order behind that every sabbath this this show bread would have to be changed out by the the uh high priest then they would eat the one that was there you see? And they had to be pure. They couldn't have been with a woman to even get into that temple. Okay? The, to, uh, uh, so the Heavenly Father, okay, uh, uh, is a very, very uh, particular, you know, clean, you know, very, the, the moral standards, like, like order, roles within uh, as a man, roles as a woman, you know. Like, he gives us a very, very intricate, you know, culture, you know, and it's all surrounded, all right, around the way that the Canaanites were living, the way that the Egyptians were living, the way that these particular heathen were living, the, the law was centered around not doing that, anti-heathen. The law is anti-heathenistic. Okay, he then drink blood and, and, and have sex on a period. And Jake does all of that stuff. <laughs> Jake is into all of these things, man. So to, to, to try and justify yourself by the law puts you in a very, very bad state. And you're setting yourself up for failure. So maybe what you guys could learn is to depend on the Lord more. Okay, Yahweh Shai. Put more emphasis on Yahweh Shai. Really, you need to take, you know, uh, the, the rearrange, take that whole name off of yourself because that's an anti Yahweh Shai movement anyway. But, you know, besides any argument, you know, we could, we could, 
you know, uh, uh, learn to get more into the loss too. All right, you don't have to be getting any super deep. It could just be you adding, le reading particular laws and learning about them. Because you got to read particular commentary sometimes. You got to go, go into particular uh, uh, culture and custom websites and, and you know, um, uh, uh, what's those type of books? I forget the name of those books. But you have books where, um, oh, oh, biblical manners and customs. All right, and you'll start to see, oh, this is why it says that. Oh, this is why it says this. But anyway, this is the book of Job 9 and 20. If I justify my, uh, myself, mine own mouth shall condemn me. So you, you don't want to be in the spirit of justifying yourself or making yourself to be perfect, making yourself to be always right. That is a, you're putting a target on your back with the most high. All right, through Yahweh Shai. All right, I, if I justify myself, mine own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. Because when you go into those laws, okay, they only show you how filthy you are. So for you to be in the spirit <laughs> of that you're perfect, I'm not breaking no laws. I'm. I'm, I'm I'm keeping the laws and you ain't you you really should uh rethink it. None of us are gonna be justified by the laws, but through faith in Yahawashad and naturally having faith will produce behavior to where what? You keep the laws. All right, but you can start to read particular laws just to be like, oh, because you gotta challenge yourself. And it's truth. You can't, you can't just deal with things that uh, are are pleasing to your soul. You got to go into the the grit. As the scriptures say, we should be curious in particulars. Let's get that. All right, let's get that. Uh, it's in the book of Second Maccabees, the second chapter. Give me one second. But read, let's read this again. If I justify myself, mine own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. Because when, you, when, you, when you're talking about I'm perfect and I'm not breaking the laws, you're putting yourself in a very, very, all right, uh, bad predicament. Because when you are judged by those standards, you're going to want mercy. Okay, which that's pretty much what I was going to start out with in Psalms 130. So, <laughs> let's see here. Let's get the book of, um, let's see, Second Maccabees, second chapter. <laughs> yeah, you got to challenge yourself. All right, hey, and you can't be offended in the most high. All right, and you can't let your sins weigh you down either. All right, because, you, you know, you're not reading the law, you know, and, and through your Shai, we were able to have this spirit. You're not reading that like, damn, and you're weighing yourself down and you're getting depressed and you, you know, uh, woe is me yourself out of the spirit. No, we still have hope in your Shai, man. So this is Second Maccabees. Chapter 2 and I start at 27. Even as it is no ease unto him that prepared a banquet and seeketh the benefit of others. All right. When you when you hosting. OK, especially a banquet and you, you know, the, that's not easy. You know, restaurant business, hey, that's not easy. That is hard work. Right. So, and this is what we're doing in the form of, of giving you this truth. It says, yet for the pleasuring of many, we will undertake gladly this great pain. So, this is a great pain. Okay? We undertake gladly these great pains. And so, the, we're, we go into these things. You know, through the Holy Spirit and you, you know, as the believer, you're able to hear perspectives of the scriptures that you never even considered. You see, 
you 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 you're able to to have to deal with the bitter because what did John the Revelator say? Right? He said when he ate the book that the Lord gave him to eat, eat this roll, all right? What did he he said it was sweet in his mouth, but in his belly it was when he had to digest what it what, what, the the you know, the reality of it, it was bitter in his belly, man. That's Revelation 10. Now it says Leaving to the author the exact handling of every particular, see, particulars, and laboring to follow the rules of an abridgment. And he's ba basically speaking of how he wrote, you know, this story. I believe this is uh, Jason of Cyrene, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, uh, in the Greek Empire, he's basically, he, he wrote, you know, he abridged this history for us to have. Okay, and this this was key, you know, the book of Maccabees, it was key because it gives us an insight into what was happening with Jake in the uh, Greek Empire, man. And what happened is the Edomite was able to set up a system of, of Hellenization to where you could not keep your customs. The Keeping the laws became illegal. Okay. Just like pretty much the keeping the laws are illegal here. You can't keep the law. If you keep the law here, okay, you're going to be uh, uh, put to death, basically. Esau will use his system to, to, to what? Condemn you. He uses the laws of the Bible to condemn you to where you can't do those things. You can't operate in righteousness. <laughs> That's how cold the game is with, with this thing called sin. And we're going to get into that. It says, so he abridged this story for us, man. And it was a great, you know, pleasure. And we do, through the Holy Spirit, the same thing as we're breaking these scriptures down unto you. Because there's so much that we have to basically cram into these lessons. It's, but it's so much more. But that's all right. That's why it's a buffet. It's a feast. You can go over there and get you some organic grapes. You can come over here and get you some, uh, 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 you know, organic wine you know you got lamb you got grains you got bread okay then in the back you got the show bread because that's where the uh, uh priest the high priest gonna be eating <laughs> all right that 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 you know that bread okay they have a more of a you know personal relationship with the most high through his son Okay, so they get the best of the best. But this is a, a feast we, we're laying out for you. So it says, for as the master builder of a new house must care for the whole building. We're building the tabernacle of David. But he that undertake to set it out and paint it must seek out fit the things adorning thereof. Even so, I think it is with us building a building. Very technical work. Okay, very, uh, uh, it, 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 re it requires as this world calls a high IQ, which that's all BS, but it requires intellect, intelligence. Okay? And the paint, you know, the sheet, the sheetrock, the cedar wood, you know, all of that. That's the same thing that we're doing as we're putting this, these, these lessons together. It says to stand up on every point and go over things at large. And to be curious in particulars belong at the first author of the story. So we are curious in particulars. And we have to know what the hell we're talking about. You know, I was sharpened up on a lot of things that I needed to know on a deeper level. Over all of this controversy. So make sure... That you're taking heed to the spirit as well. Maybe the Lord is telling us, "Hey, you, 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 you need to read more of the law sometimes." Okay, it's in the Bible. It's in the volume of the book. The whole, the whole volume of the book. Now, of course, we're in a time of prophecy. Okay, but I will say this can be used as a, uh, you know, a way to fear the Lord more because when you read, you know, those laws. Of course, you're not you're not gonna burden your overburden yourself with trying to keep it perfectly in this crazy situation. But you could you know be more clean, <laughs> all right, uh, separate, holy, to the best of your ability. 
Okay? It ain't saying that now you go take eight showers a day. I'm just talking about clean, period, man. It's a spiritual thing. <laughs> but wa water washing was, you know, a, a heavy custom of ours. Okay? Washing your clothes or just washing, period. And Jake still has that spirit, but it's just we're just so low level, man. Here and through. Now, this is Psalms 130 and 1. Out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. And your supplication, you're begging, you're praying. If thou, Yahweh, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? All right? <laughs> if you would mark iniquities, if you didn't, if there wasn't the mercies of David for the remnant, who would stand? Who would live? Who would make it? None of us. You see? But there is a forgiveness with thee that thou mayest be his fear. And how do you who's that forgiveness through? Yahweh Shai. So knowing that you have been covered from these technicalities and the curse of the law. That is a reason to fear more as you read those laws and see what you were covered from. <laughs> okay? And when I say covered, Yahweh Shai delivered us from the curse of the law. Where the, whereas the law can be used as a way to condemn you to death. Okay? Yahweh Shai covered that. All of those sins was put on him. Wow. Romans 3 and 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. See, when you read the law, what it technically does is it shows you how filthy you are. But you have particular Jake sitting around here acting like they read that and they, they're into that lifestyle, which they're not. They're not into the, the, the promoting the, the laws outside of eating I'm not eating pork, okay, uh, uh, the Sabbath, which Jake defiling that, but I'm just saying, a uh, 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 lamb, you know, uh, uh, holy days, okay, and a few other things, you know, you know, dietary things. Outside of that, you know, Jake don't really be pushing, you know, if they make oils and ain't holy anointing oil, okay. You're supposed to make anointing oils. I make them. That's in our law. Okay? When you when you read about Exodus 30, how the Lord commanded Moses to uh get the particular, you know, frankincense, the myrrh, the cinnamon, you know, the galbanum, these different spices and herbs out of the earth, all right? He made an anointing oil that only the sons of Aaron were to be anointed with, man. Okay, or although there is a law where it says, you know, if you make this exact one, you know, because that was for the priest, you're not supposed to remake that exact oil, but you can use those different ingredients and make anointing oils, giving your people a, 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 a you know, a, a insight into what our our forefathers did, the showbread, different things like that. Okay. It's, it's, it's a lot, man. You know, getting into our heritage, it, you know, it draws us closer to our Lord. And you start to click like, oh, damn, okay. This is, this is, a, 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 this book is, this is heavy. So, if the Lord marked iniquities, who, who would stand? Get the book of Romans. And I don't want to make this too long. Romans 7 and 7. Well, then, am I suggestion, suggesting that the law of God is sinful? No, that's not what we're saying. Okay, the, 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 the flesh is sinful. The, the flesh is used as a weapon against you when it comes to those laws. Okay? It says, in fact, it was the law that showed me my sin. I would never have known what coveting 
that coveting is wrong if the law had not said you must not covet. Okay, you you walking. Okay, and you look and you see it's a dude with his woman. Okay, and then they keep walking and you look back and you 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 look at her ass. You don't want to do that, but now by the law, knowing the law, you know I went off. Why the fuck did I do that? Why did I look? I hate adultery. Why would I do that? Why would I look? This is the type of shit that happens in this flesh that that, that where the law condemns you that quick. Okay? You start to see somebody else's lifestyle and you start to start to picture yourself in that lifestyle. So you start to covet that lifestyle. Now, there's nothing wrong with wanting things or being inspired by one. Okay? But coveting, let's look up the word coveting. Matter of fact, let's see if we can find here. I shall not covet. Thou shall not covet. Let's see. Should be in Exodus. Yep, you shall not covet thy neighbor's house. And, and, and what do you do? You you do evil to get something somebody else has. Okay? And people do that. Okay, but it's by the law you now know, damn. I went off. And you, when you read the laws, you're going to start to notice that you're going to be like, oosh, you go get cut. You go get cut a lot. The word covet. Let me one second here. Thachamad. It says, Hamad, to desire, to take pleasure in, to be desirable to where it consumes you. Okay? It, it, it can consume you and make you into a sinner. Okay? You can covet good things. Okay? But coveting can be uh, 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 evil as well, man. Once you start to really get into the laws and what they mean, you start to see how full of shit you are. And how you need to do better and change your thinking. Because it's really all fulfilled in your walk. The law is fulfilled, what? In not doing these things. What's that, uh, uh, Romans 13, my favorite, one of my favorite. All right. Romans, the 13th chapter. And uh, eighth verse. Oh, no man, anything. But to love one another, one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. <laughs> for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, that thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that in that knowing the time that it is now high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than what we believed. OK, so. Loving your neighbor as yourself is fulfilling the law. OK, and then there is particular aspects of the law that you will clearly be able to tie to your All right. Case in point, the fringes. Right. They were a carnal thing we would look to to remember not to commit adultery, remember not to steal, remember not to covet, to remember. All right. But now you have your Hawashai you look to. The scriptures say to him shall the Gentiles seek, meaning you're looking to it. That's the ensign. As a matter of fact, it said your Hawashai, let's get it real quick, shall be an ensign. Is that Romans 11? I mean, Isaiah 11. A banner. Something to look to. Okay, so you 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 guys need to use the law and apply it in a more of a spiritual sense. And maybe we can go and read more laws and become well more acquainted with them. How about that? You need to apply your Hawashai into these uh, uh, equations and stop being so high minded in that first covenant that you broke.
We all broke it. And this is speaking of Yahweh Shai, man, the righteous branch. And what is he going to do? He's going to gather the remnant, the restored remnant, man. Okay? It says, and, and he shall set, verse 12, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations, because Israel will be scattered amongst the nations. Okay? And shall assemble the outcasts of Israel to gather together the desire, the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. All right. And, and, and Judah and Ephraim was going to be joined back together. Now, this word ensign and the ensign is this the banner, the word. Yahweh Shai. All right. Nasa. Something lifted up a standard, a signal, a signal pole, just like the serpent on the pole. You were to look to it. Well, we look to Yahweh Shai ensign. Let's see what an ensign is, a banner. That's what the fringe was. We can apply it in the sense where, okay, it, 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 it's, it's more so Yahweh Shai. And even if you want to wear the fringes, that's cool. We never condemned the fringes. We were condemned, okay, as sinners, the worst sinners in the world behind the fringes, man. But we there, there's a scripture that covers us there. All things are, are lawful, but all things are not expedient. All things edify not. For every person's situation, you can't force that on them. It could work against particular people in particular situations. Just because you're bold and you got a life to where you, you don't give a damn if you lose your, you, you may not have a job. You may be getting dough. Well, the average person that's listening to you, that's just waking up, you don't want to put them, uh, 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 bind them to, you get fringes on everything, yada, 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 just beat them down the head with the law. No, you, you. You bring them and nurture them into this truth with Yahweh Shai. And naturally, as you become an Israelite, you're going to start to want to learn more laws. Okay, and then what can you do with that point? You work out your own salvation with fear and trembling with the liberty you have in Yahweh Shai, man. And every person's walk is not the same. So that what that apply that what is that 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 you that mean that you need the spirit, man. Above, you know, sitting up here beating each other over the head. No, it's it's, it's more about a spirit of a uh, behavior, man. And that's what that Yahweh Shai rolled with those type of people. They were sinners. They were beat down, but they were you know they were willing. They believed. Anyway, it says a flag or a standard, a military or naval indicating uh, nationality, a sign or emblem, flag standard. And, and, and ultimately it's a fringe Yahweh Shai can be applied to the fringes man and the fringes were just on the border of the garment what about your covering the garment was the more important thing the covering <laughs> you see and that's why the scriptures say awake awake put on our beautiful garments meaning you changing your mind so there's a lot of the laws that can be applied spiritually and there's particular laws you can use to, to become a cleaner person, a better person, different thinking, not laxed in particular areas in your life. Okay? You get some box and then you go into the, the, the uh, bathroom and wash your hand with some damn, uh, wash your rod with some damn hand soap. Get your ass in the shower, man. Right? <laughs> You know, not to say you ain't going to be saved. The Lord ain't dealing with you when you ain't doing that. But now that you're reading these laws, you're like, oh. Let me stop taking these cowboy baths. Them whole baths. They call them a whole baths. Your big ass in the, in the bathroom. With some uh, 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 sour apple hand soap. Oh, man. We got to get out of here, man. So, anyway... Back back to Romans, the seventh chapter. In the seventh verse, well then, am I suggesting that the law of God is sinful? Of course not. In fact, it was the law that showed me my sin. I would I would never have known what coveting that coveting is wrong if the law had not said you must not covet. <laughs> 
You see? Now you're starting to see this flesh. All right. And this system is, is really a, a weapon against the law. They use this system and this flesh uses the law to keep you in a low vibration, man. To keep you in a, in a, in a, in a constant state of death. Rebellion against the Lord. But sin used this command to arouse all kind of covetous desires within me. So now that you read the law and you know it, now you notice this bullshit you be doing. Damn, that I'm <laughs> I be doing I'm coveting. <laughs> you know? I need to chill. I need to be more thankful with what I have. I need to be, you know, thankful with, you know, daily bread, you know, not riches. What the scriptures say? You say you won't, you don't want riches nor poverty. What's that? Needful for me. Uh, bread. It's in a book of so uh, Proverbs. Proverbs 30 and 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither riches, all right, nor poverty. Feed me with food convenient for me. That's got to be your, 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 your mindset. See, lest I be full and deny thee. You get too much money. You get lukewarm. You start going on all these vacations. You get an Instagram page. A new one. All right, where you posting all these pictures and shit. Got all these new women. You 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 you, I mean, you go you doing the work trying to do the work in front of the beach. Now there's nothing wrong with doing the work in front of the beach, but you all the way in Bermuda somewhere, doing a a, a three minute video in front of the, the the you know the scenery, and your ass ain't being you don't see your ass for two weeks. So you don't want to be full. You don't want too much here on this side. See, you want food convenient for you. You want the Lord's will to be done for you. And he's done. He's given us our daily bread. Okay? So the, the, the prayer is what? Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. So being content with what you have keeps you from having sinful desires and thoughts as well. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is Yahweh? <laughs> All right. And people do that. Money and fame and likes and man, that really messes people's head up. Or lest I be poor and still and take the name of my God in vain. You don't want to be to a point. Where you 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 out on the streets, all right, and, and, and fifteen degree weather, you know, with no socks on, begging and just trying to find somewhere to no, you don't want that either. All right, I know the precept is going to lead us to. Uh, let's see here, we got Peter. Being content with there you go, even in our prayer. Okay, give us this day, Matthew 6 and 11, give us this day our daily bread. You should pray that every day, whether in Hebrew or just in English. All right, pray this prayer every day and, and consider what it means too. Don't just say it, consider what it means. Give us this day our daily bread, man. Okay, uh, uh, being content as you get, get into the practice of being more thankful for what the Lord has given you instead of being in a constant mindset. Now, of course, you have this. The flesh longs to win. OK, and that that works against you. too. You want to be happy. Who doesn't want to be happy? You the flesh was created, you know, to, to for pleasure. So you're going to have desires. All right. But it, it will help to get in a mindset of being more appreciative and thanking the Lord for your situations and things you have. Instead of being so angry about what you don't have. It wasn't his will for you to have it. We have to be more content with the will of the Lord. And you're going to have to through prophecy. How do you think you're going to get through the straight gate 
without being content with the will of the Lord at that moment. Knowing something better is coming. Anyway, Romans 7 and 8, but sin used this command to arouse all kind of covetous desires within me. See? When you when once you read them laws and you put you you put in particular situations where you can be cleaner, you gonna be like, oh man. You gonna start making excuses, you gonna start <laughs> You know. But hey, thanks thank the water the for the most high for sending his only begotten son. If there were no law, sin would not have that power. You see? So this is you know, the the law written on stone really exposed us as a people in this flesh it didn't work okay so the lord is going to give us a, a a new covenant where those laws will be just written in us we won't have to have a, a a written standard to say okay let me go to this let me go to that what does this say about that what do i do in this situation you'll just do it automatically and do you imagine? Can you imagine the laws being implemented on the earth? The, the the way that the seeds are sown. That's even in the law. The law tells you not to mingle seed, to mingle all right uh, 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 fabrics. So when you read those things, you notice, like, damn, I'm, I, damn, I'm going off. Okay, the law of a, a woman when she's on a cycle. When you when you read that, you like, oh Lord, I didn't cleanse myself. Cause even touching the, the and I'm saying not saying when you lay with her, but I'm saying when you when you touch the same couch she sat on, when you lay in the same bed she laid in, when you on the what do you do? You defiled. You're unclean. It would have to be a purification process. All right, especially to do holy things, you wouldn't be able to part, part, participate. You be in violation. So the law is a beautiful thing, all right? But this flesh, all right, makes it impossible to keep, to, to hold to those standards of that first covenant. Not only is it the flesh and sin, but it's the man of sin in his system. Okay, what does the scripture say? The wicked have laid snares for me. That are not after thy law. The Psalms 119 and 85. The the proud, and who's the most proud? The pride of thine heart have deceived thee, have dig pits for me, which are not after thy law. So this whole society are filled with pits where you have to automatically sin or be unclean to your very jobs okay you work for the government you 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 you're helping the beast system okay anything you do in this system you're helping for the beast and within those jobs there are situations you're going to be in where automatic uh, uh, uncleanliness automatic going off everything the the sabbath you're working so the law Esau went into the law and built a society, and all of the heathen have done, done this, the way they live. They built a society where Esau did it the most, man. And the Canaanites, and the, this is why this is Canaan. This is Egypt. This is Babylon. This is Sumeria. This is all over again. And all of those civilizations were, were built upon the foundation of the Most High God, Yahweh, His ways ain't the way. We gonna do it our way. They were, they did things contrary to the chosen people. So the proud have dig pits for me, which are not after Thy law. <laughs> See that? The proud have dig pits for me, which are not after Thy law. So the whole system is set up as a as a as a snare. Okay? It says this metaphor is taken from the mode in which wild beasts are caught in the east, deep pits are dug in the earth, <laughs> and the earth is full of pits. This is the valley of the shadow of death. 
you're constantly in the in the, the way you have to live as a man. You're constantly in a state of of of, of uh, uncleanliness. So how can we in th these vessels in this condition be justified by the laws? You have to be honest with yourself. However, read those laws. Read some of those laws, man. Very interesting. It says, <laughs> and animals attempting to walk over these these uh, pits break and they fall in and are taken alive. And that's basically how Esau's rules, man. Okay? The, the whole system is centered around us going off. Anyway... Even the foods. What do you think he's doing all that stuff to, in the food for? He knows your laws. He knows who you are. Why do you think the Greeks wanted us to eat that swine so bad? To offer it on the, on the, as a, on the altar? Why do you think they paying Jake so much to do all this weirdo stuff? Dwayne Wade. All these weirdos popping up. Tyler Perry. Why do you think they, they making that your culture? Could it be because it's against the laws of the, the Bible? Yes. And it condemns you. It's used as a way. The law is used as a weapon against us in this society. I, I realize that. I, I realize looking in this world, this is what they're doing. But sin used the commandment and the man of sin, <laughs> the man of sin and sin pretty much used this commandment to arouse all kind of covetous desires within me. If there is no law, sin would not have that power. Wow. So we need Yahweh Shah to put it in us, man. At one time I lived without understanding of the law. And you weren't condemned by the things you used to do. You didn't consider yourself unclean in particular situations. You didn't have those thoughts. But when I learned the command not to covet, for instance, the power of sin came to life. There you go. So th that first covenant set us up for failure in this flesh. But the Lord knew because th this is how the story was supposed to go. The Lord wrote slavery in for us in the story. Can you believe that? Various times. What you going to say? And you actually have people, Jake, who say, I can't believe in a God that would put us in slavery. But here it is, your ass went into slavery. Why did it happen? What's the explanation? What's next? Oh. See, those 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 philosophies Jake get into don't have those answers, but they just become proud. With the, with the will of the Lord annoys them. All right? It says, and I died, so I discovered that the law's commands, which were supposed to bring life, brought spiritual death instead. <laughs> you weighed down like, whoa. That's why the scriptures say you can't let your, your sins weigh you down. Okay? It should, you, you, you should do better, but you can't weigh... Uh, uh, what's that scripture? It's uh, in my 2nd Edges 16. 2nd Edges 16. Yeah, man. Second edge of 16 and 75. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide and a guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts. You see, there's, it's, 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 it's not just about the 613 as well. There's precepts that give you sound advice and orders for the situation that you're in. But what happens is we choose the flesh over taking Discipline. Discipline is bitter. You see? But it leads to life. Okay? And the guide is bitter to the flesh because the flesh is contrary to the spirit. You want to please the flesh. But then the laws, you read them and you're like, oh shit. The precepts, you, you know, the, the Lord, the inner the overall energy of our culture, you, you know, you should think. <laughs> uh, Lord, get your ass. It says saith the Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. 
So you can't allow your sins to weigh you down. And you can't be over wicked. All right? Look, you sep you're supposed to be separate to the best of your ability, right? But you can't let your iniquities lift themselves up either. Okay? So you 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 teaching Israel to 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 that is okay to profane the Sabbath in a sexual matter. Okay, is 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 uh dangerous. You you don't want to be in that spirit as the Lord is getting ready to bring judgment. All right, you should relook that from the perspective of a priest. Approach the Sabbath from the perspective of a priest and tell me what you come up with when it comes to the act of sex. Type in priestly duties on the Sabbath. As a matter of fact, What? What were the priest, priestly doodles? I should have put priest, priestly. Uh, let's see if this has it. Second Chronicles 35 seems to go into it as well. We can read that at some point in your, you know, if you want to read it. Um, priest, let's see if it goes to it. Priest and Levites, duties and gifts. Uh, numbers 18 and 30, 18 and 1, you and your sons in the ancestral house. Under your charge shall bear any guilt connected with the sanctuary. All right. <laughs> you shall not bear guilt connected with the sanctuary. You couldn't enter into the sanctuary in a uh, unclean state. You and your sons alone shall bear any guilt connected with your priesthood. Y'all right, hear this? If you want to take on that title as a priest, it says you will incur no guilt uh, through it. Once you have removed the best part from it, you must... You must, must not profane the sacred donations of the Israelite lest you die. It said, God reiterates to Aaron the role of his descendants, of he and his descendants that they will play in the tabernacle for all time. They are to perform the rites of atonement while the Levites are to offer the support to the priest. So you had the high priest and you had the, uh, the, the rest of the Levites. Okay, and they all had particular roles to support the priest, all right. And we are doing this in spirit with our high priest being Yahweh Shai, all right. And hopefully our gifts are accepted because you would bring a gift, and the high priest could deny it. You know, it says, and what were the gifts for the temple? It says, it is the responsibility of Aaron and his descendants to ensue that they do not come in contact, contact with the holy vessels directly lest they be killed <laughs> it says god also designates certain gifts to be dedicated to the priests and levites a portion of every heave offering yada 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 firstborns okay i didn't really go into too much okay Yeah, but on the on the Sabbath, you know, you can look it up. I'm pretty sure you can find more. You know, maybe somebody can post something they find. You know, priestly uh, the, the, the the duties of the high priest. You know, on the Sabbath, all the priests were taken from the Kohan family, the second son of Levi. Uh, boy, set apart, offer gifts. They would teach Israel the law. Okay, it says, And ye may teach the children of Israel all the statues which Yahweh has spoken unto them. So would a priest who himself is keep has to keep the Sabbath holy? Okay? Now, everybody may not have had to go through all of the purification rituals, but as a priest, okay, 
who you you're going into the holy thing dealing with the the holy tabernacle you would have to by default not have sex and you for you who are watching this now if you do that again you know you're gonna feel i guarantee you, you're gonna be like damn in the back of your head so the best thing to do as it says in james to do him that know it to do good and do it and not to him it is sin the best thing to do okay don't do anything that condemns your conscience man but if you feel all right justified in that after you know what a priest was doing on that day okay The priest determined whether a person was sick or healthy, so the priests were like, you know, uh, you know, not doctors but healers, man. They, 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 <laughs> you know. Anyway, Deuteronomy thirty-three and ten summarizes the priestly duties: Thou shalt teach Jacob thy judgments and Israel thy law. They shall put incense before thee. All right, and whole burnt sacrifices upon thine altar. You could not be in an unclean state doing those things. Okay? And there was a system. So you would have particular days, you know, that you would be able to lay with a woman. Okay? But she would have to be a virgin. She couldn't have been with no other man. So, man, the laws are very interesting. Anyway... I went off on that tangent. Uh, Romans 7, okay, and 11. Sin took advantage of those commandments, the man of sin as well, and deceived me, and it used the commandments to kill me. But still the law itself is holy, and, it, and the commands are holy and right and good. But how can that be? Did the, did the law, which is good, cause my death? Of course not. Sin use what was good to bring about my condemnation okay in particular that first covenant works against you in this flesh okay so we can see how terrible sin really is okay it uses god's good commands for its own evil purposes it's not in in, in esau's doing that is that not what he's doing he put pork in everything So trouble is not with the law, all right, for the spiritual. But when you read the, the, the curse that came with breaking those laws, you're through. You're condemned. The trouble is with me. That's why Isaiah said our righteousness is as filthy rags. And you got Jake laughing at that scripture. That's not funny. You don't if you don't look, if you don't believe that, then you really don't understand where you was what's going on. We're filthy. We we have missed the mark so far when it comes to that first covenant standard. Oh my goodness. Them laws, bro. Anyway. This nigga who was this guy? This is Psalms one nineteen and seventy one. It is good for me that I have been afflicted. I'm glad we went through this fall. You know, the Lord wrote a very, very beautiful movie. Okay, now you understand why. Reading our forefathers, what we've done and what we, the condition we're in, like how far off the mark we are. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. So now, you know, you go into those laws and you understand more. You, you start to, you know, the, the particular things, you're like, oh, okay. It's, it's very interesting. So... I just wanted to go into that. Hopefully, I'll edify it. On to the next. Shalom.